Welcome to another edition of ProSoft Technology Video Training. Today we'll be going over some of the new features of the ICX35HWC cellular gateway when using version 1.2 or later. We have another video available that goes over how to log into the gateway's built-in web page and perform the basic setup and configuration. If you've just received your ICX35 and need to go through the initial setup, we recommend you watch that video first. For this training session, we'll imagine a scenario where we have an ICX35 connected to a PLC at our factory site. The PLC program is controlling and monitoring assembly machines on the factory floor. For the video, we'll be using a Rockwell Control Logics PLC, and we use an add-on instruction to communicate with the cellular gateway so that you can receive an SMS text message alerting you of a raw material shortage and send an SMS text back to pause the machine until you can get more raw material. We'll also see how your PLC can access the ICX35 status data, such as signal strength and data usage, so that your operator could identify a potential cellular network problem. This diagram shows the IP address of my cellular gateway, my PC, as well as the Ethernet bridge module in the PLC that I'll be using for this tutorial. Let's begin. I'll log into my ICX35's web page. There are just a couple of things that we have to do here. We need to enable the EIP object and set the end device IP address. By default, the EIP object is disabled. You can see from the main status page, at the bottom, EIP is disabled. So we'll go to the Configuration tab and open up the Advanced Parameters by clicking Advanced over on the left. Down at the bottom, I'll expand Ethernet IP, click on the status, and set it to Enable. Next, I'll go back to the Basic Configuration page, and under LAN Settings, I can see the IP address for the LAN port of the ICX35. And below that, we have the end device IP address, and this needs to be set to the IP of the Ethernet bridge module in my PLC rack. Once that is done, I can click Apply. The ICX35 will reboot, and once it's finished, I'll log back in, and now I can see that the EIP is enabled. Now that we've done that, we're ready to bring the ICX35 into our RS Logix 5000 or Studio 5000 project and make use of the SMS texting features. We'll open up RS Logix 5000. I have a project already set up and running here, and I want to bring in my ICX35 so that I can receive text messages from the PLC as well as check the status of the ICX35 from the PLC program. To do this, I'll need to import the supplied add-on instruction and then create an Ethernet path to get to our cell modem. In the project menu bar, I'll expand the backplane, select the Ethernet port of my bridge module, and choose New Module. In the Select Module Type window, uncheck the filter types, then select Communications. Scroll down to Generic Ethernet Bridge, select it, and click Create. We'll give it a name, and we recommend that you name it ICX35. You can give it a different name if you like, but you'll then have to change some of the message paths in the add-on instruction, and I'll show you how to do that. We give it the Ethernet address of the cell modem, and then click OK, and close. Now we're ready to import the add-on instruction to our project. The AOI can be found on our product page on our website. I'll go to Tasks, Main Task, Main Program, and click on Main Routine. Right-click on any available rung and select Import Rung. In the window that pops up, navigate to the location of the ICX35 add-on rung file, select it, and click Import. This will open up the Import dialog box, Click OK, and the import process will begin. Once the process is complete, I'll delete the empty rung zero, and you can see all the new user-defined data types, as well as the add-on instruction here in the menu bar. If you do give the ICX35 a unique name, you'll need to reconfigure the path 
from the controller tags to your ICX35. To do this, you'll notice there are these five configuration dialog nodes. The top one you should just leave alone. But for each of the bottom four, which correspond to controller tags for the ICX35, you'll click on them. In the window that opens, you'll open the communication tab. And for the path, you will browse for and select your ICX35. Once selected, you can click OK. And you'll do this for each of the four nodes here. Again, this is only necessary if you gave the ICX35 a unique name other than ICX35. At this point, it's a good time to save your project. We'll open up the controller tags where we can see the tags for the ICX35 that the AOI brought in. Now, I'll expand ICX35, and there are four tags that comprise the functionality of the ICX35 in the program. Control, Status, SMS, and Utility. I'll take a look at ICX35 Control. This tag is used to trigger all the commands to the gateway, such as get status, reset status, and trigger SMS messages. We also have the ICX35 status tag. This tag will be populated once the get status trigger has been toggled by entering a 1. Once you do that, the ICX35.status.SMS messages sent controller tag should increment by one each time an SMS text message is sent successfully. You can check for received messages under the SMS messages received tag. These message counters are how the application knows that the ICX35 has sent or received a new SMS message. Once you have a program up and running, ladder logic can be used to monitor the messages received counter and when it detects a new SMS message to trigger an SMS read command to retrieve the SMS message from the ICX35. We also have signal strength, the WAN IP address, bytes sent and bytes received for both the LAN and the WAN, power on time, link up time, and data usage down here. Next, we'll go over SMS text messages. Expand SMS, and here are the SMS read and SMS write tags. To send text messages to cellular devices from the gateway, you have to use the SMS write array. The SMS read array contains the SMS text messages received by the gateway from cellular devices. When the control trigger for the SMS read is toggled, you will see the most current text messages in the ICX35's buffer populate the SMS read tags. The message byte count shows the number of bytes allowable in the SMS messages. 160 is the standard limit. The phone count is the number of cellular phones or devices that will receive SMS messages from the ICX35. You can enter up to five, and the phone numbers themselves would be entered in here, phone one through five. You can just type in the phone number in the first tag, and when you hit enter, RS Logix will format it in the tags for you, which is very helpful. If we look under read message, we can see the actual text message being read from the ICX35. Looking under the SMS write array, we see everything works the same with the phone numbers, etc. Under write message, you can enter in a message that can be sent out as an SMS text to all the numbers in the phone number tags. As with entering the phone numbers, you can just type in your message in the first tag and hit enter, and RS Logix will format it into the tags. To trigger this SMS write, you can go to the controller tag, like you would for all the other commands, and toggle the ICX35 control.write SMS tag. Now we'll look at how these SMS texting features could be used in a real-world application. For this tutorial, I have a machine in my factory that's being fed from a bin of raw materials. I'd like to receive an SMS text that will alert me when this bin of raw materials is running low. I then want to be able to send a text message that will instruct the PLC to pause the machine. I would then like to receive a text message confirming that that machine has been paused. 
and this will give me time to get to the factory and refill the bin of raw materials. It'll be up to you to write the ladder logic to make your program interface with the ICX35 add-on instruction. I already have another project with the ladder code entered into the main routine. Now we can take a quick look at it just to show you the basics of how it works. And let's test it now. I've already entered my phone number into the SMS array in the controller tags. What all this will do when the PLC program detects that a raw material in the manufacturing process is running low, this will trigger a text message to be written to the ICX35, which will then send the message out as an SMS text to my phone that says material A low. That's an SMS write. Once I've received this text on my mobile device, I can then text machine A off. This will trigger a command to pause the process on machine A in our program. This is an SMS read, and the PLC program will read the text and trigger the machine to pause. So once the PLC detects that the status of the machine has been set to pause, the program will trigger a text to be written to the i635, which will then send out an SMS text with a message of machine A is off. So now I know that my texted instruction to pause the machine has been successful. The ampersands you see here are because the character count that I set for SMS writes exceeds the number of characters in the message. So they're just a place filler. This is just a small sample of the sort of functionality that you can get using the SMS texting features with the ICX35. That does it for this training session. If you have any questions about the ICX35 and its features, visit our website or feel free to give us a call. Until next time, happy training.